To start things off, I'm 17 and currently live with my dad. We have about 16 or 17 acres out where we are with much of it my dad uses to hunt on during the season. Well, this last season, we had something interesting happen. My dad's a big time hunter and even goes as far as getting a doe tag for the extra meat. He's got a buddy who's a butcher, so he gets a lot of free jerky, steaks, back and leg straps, and more for him for virtually free. Anyway, my dad has a rather large shed or shop. It's older and long before we moved here. It's like a large shed, the size of a shop that my dad installed lights in and other stuff to make it his shop for the time being. There's no concrete slab for the floor though. It's just dirt. Really fine packed down dirt. It's about a few hundred feet out if I really had to guess. During the season, he actually hangs, dresses, and harvests all the meat in his shop. Because of this, the shop usually reeks like blood and death during this time. That's pretty normal. One morning, my dad got up and he was going out to pull hunks of meat out of his big freezer in the shop. I hear him start yelling and shouting. I go running out there to see what the matter is and to the back side of the shop, there was a massively dug hole that led directly underneath the shed or shop. When I say a massively dug hole, I mean a hole about eight or so feet deep, probably close to seven feet wide all the way underneath the shop. It looked like a digging crew had came here and dug on the side of the shop underneath into it. The hole didn't look like it had been dug up by shovels, but rather big handfuls of some sort of large tool by the way the dirt looked. There was also a huge mound of dirt behind the hole on the outside, giving the impression it was like an animal dug its way underneath the shop. The only animals my dad and I know of that do this is dogs. Even if this ain't no dog, there's nothing that can dig an eight foot hole directly underneath the shop. It was unsettling. My dad had to spend some hours filling the hole back up. Nothing inside of the shop seemed to be disturbed or moved in any way. I almost wonder if because my father just dressed a deer in there a day prior, that it could have possibly attracted a large predator. I mean, the shed isn't terribly big and smells so bad of death and blood. My dad didn't have any deer meat or parts lying around, but maybe a big cougar or something smelt it and tried to get in. I don't know. I can accept that some animal wanted it because of this, especially after my dad agreed with me but we just can't come up with any animal that digs this big of a hole. Any ideas? I live in northern Utah, but attended college in southern Utah. I had a favorite sports spot to hunt rabbits out in the desert. There's caves all over the mountains in this area, and we had heard that the Native American women and children would hide in those caves from the U.S. Calvary to avoid being raped and murdered. Anyway, one day while hunting, we headed towards the base of the mountain to collect one of the rabbits, and we heard an unearthly low growl. It wasn't something natural, like a mountain lion or a bear. It was very deep and gave us both goosebumps. We both looked at each other and left the area. Before any of this ever happened, we had noticed a black donkey around the area. This area is miles away from anyone, and the donkey just roamed freely. We joked around and called it the devil monkey, but I'm starting to question if it was a possible skinwalker. It was there every day, just wandering around the desert, didn't make a sound, and sometimes we would catch it just staring blankly at us. Most of the time when returning home at night, we would see these black silhouettes around the mountains that looked like people but they would always be gone by the time we got to them. Thoughts? Were we just being paranoid? 2014 to 2015. I was 12. I saw a hairless, not extremely skinny, but definitely malnourished, pale, nude man, woman thing, literally just hop across the street on all fours. From one forest to the other, at like around 1 to 3 a.m. Except it definitely wasn't a man or a woman. 
It was about 50 to 60 yards away, under the only streetlight that worked on the entire road. It lasted like three seconds before it vanished again. It didn't even notice us. As soon as it was out of sight, I started to run for my life. We get back to my house in literally seconds, break everything behind us, and lock every door as fast as our 12-year-old legs would carry us. A friend of mine was with me. We were in the middle of a discussion, just chilling, so he was facing the opposite direction and didn't see it. All it took was my facial expression for him to start moving. He even started running a second before me, and he didn't even see it. That's how petrified I was. I described it to him at my house. Him being in a spooky YouTube stuff told me to Google the rake. So I did. Shitted myself, only a little, when I saw how identical some of the fake rake photos and some of the rake art looked like. I tried my best to get some real information, but there's way too many memes. It just led me to questioning my own sanity. I pretty much gave up hope. Occasionally, searching rake or the rake every couple months, still looking five plus years later. That's how I found what I found. If you don't believe me, then please just move on. I had to share this because I'm 300% positive others have gone through the same thing as me. There are plenty of crackheads and drug addicts here, but I don't think even all the drugs in the world could do this to somebody. It looks so human, but so feral and outlandish at the same time. I'd be willing to bet my dick and balls it wasn't human, or any creature with a name at that. I'm also in Ontario, and I live on Lake Simcoe. There's literally nothing out here except for trees and the occasional streetlight every kilometer that actually works, so it certainly wasn't a prank. I don't know what I saw that night, but it's going to stick with me for the rest of my life. I wanted to write this to you sooner, but my family and I have been busy quarantining and getting supplies ready to hunker down. Speaking of the matter, I hope you and all of your fans are staying safe as needed. On with what I saw. Back when life was a little more normal in early February, I was driving home from work. I do networking support for a rather small company, so I'm usually there all morning and sometimes into the later evening. This day in question, I got off work at around 4 p.m. The drive back to my house is roughly 45 minutes. Because of it still being in winter, it was still getting dark out earlier than it is now. I think sunset is roughly around 6 p.m. if I remember. I just know that it was dusk outside at the time, but still plenty of light and visibility. I live a ways out there, but not out in the sticks like some people do. I was on a long stretch of road that's not brimming full of houses and people, but there are houses spread out. It's a light traffic road, but not dead by any means on both sides. On both sides of the road are large fields of private land. There's nothing on them. No trees, nothing. Just large, empty fields backed up by trees and forests. I have no estimate for how many acres of field there are. Maybe 10 if I had to guess. I'm driving north on this road. No other car on the road in my range of visibility at the time. I was listening to the radio when my eye caught this large object moving in the tall grass to my right. I squint my eyes to try and see it better, and I start to make out this object, and it's actually a person. I'm getting closer and closer, and start to slow down to get a much better look. As I'm getting closer, I can see more vivid detail and understand that this was much larger than a person, even though the shape was like a person, but still walked upright like a person. It was huge. This is also when I noticed large canine-esque ears and large broad shoulders and a dog head. It was walking away from where I was looking, so I was seeing its backside through the grass. It was moving slowly, almost with a limp. It kind of slumped as it walked. It was very strange. It reminded me immediately of how zombies kind of stagger and limp slowly. Or maybe it was severely injured in some way. I don't know. 
I almost came to a standstill in my car, just trying to look out my window to watch it. It was far enough away that I don't think it could hear me, or my car, but I could tell that it was large. Whatever it was that had a dog-like head and walking upright, I'll never know what it was. It was walking towards the tree that were still hundreds of feet away, if not more. I eventually came to a standstill. For probably about two minutes, I sat there on the road, watching it, my car totally still with my foot on the brake, until it reached the trees and entered. I have never seen an animal like that before, certainly not an animal that big, and I've never seen a bear before in my life, but I'm sure that bears don't walk upright, especially like that. It's like I was looking at the backside of a werewolf or something. I, I know that sounds strange, but that's the only way I know how to describe it. Some slumping injured werewolf limping off into the woods is what I thought about. Only thing is that it can't be, because werewolves don't exist. So what did I see? I was so amazed at what I saw. I was very lucky I had that time to sit and watch this thing. Had a car came up behind me, I probably would have just put my blinker on and let them pass me. No other cars came from the opposite direction either. I'm pretty sure I'm the only one that saw this thing. I tried to do some research and after extensive encounter reading, this very well could have been a dogman. Based on the size, this thing was huge and the dog head and I don't see any other options. My mind doesn't want to go there though because we've been taught our whole lives that it isn't reality and those things don't exist. I don't know. I haven't told any family or friends about this. so. You're pretty much the first one. I just chalk this up to being some sort of unknown animal, but it could be a dogman. I don't know. I'll never know for sure. This latest encounter took place on Friday, August 5th, 2019, at approximately 7.30 p.m. as I was walking from my Jeep to the duplex I live in after getting back from work. The sun was setting behind me as I pulled into the short driveway in front of my home. The sun had gone down to the point where it was below the treetops, yet still not at the horizon, so there was still some ambient light left in the day. It was incredibly hot that day, like pushing 100, and it had only cooled off a little bit by that point, with the humidity still at 100%. My neighborhood is lower middle class, so all of the houses are small, but there is a bit of space between each of them, giving everyone a little elbow room, at least. The street I live on is a cut-through between two parts of our small town, so even though we are pretty rural, the road out front actually gets pretty busy sometimes. My place is just a few yards off the street, and I have a backyard that extends out about 20 feet behind the building before stopping abruptly at the patch of trees dividing my neighbor's lawn from mine. As usual, I parked in the gravel about 20 feet from the edge of the screened-in patio where my girlfriend was sitting on the porch swing. She gets off work much earlier than I do, and she is usually there with a drink in hand each weekday when I got home. None of this seems relevant, I am just trying to cover anything and everything this time. I parked on the left side of my house grabbed my things, got out, and started walking around the front of my jeep toward the house. As soon as I got out of the vehicle, I began to hear a clicking sound in my ears, but I thought it was just sinus pressure or something at first because it sounded like it was inside my ear canal. My girlfriend was on the phone, but she smiled and waved at me as I walked up, and it's at that exact moment when I looked up at her that I saw it out of the corner of my eye. I quickly looked over, and there it was, as clear as can be, standing at the edge of that little patch of trees. Per usual, as soon as I saw it, it saw me. For anyone that hasn't heard my first post, the thing is roughly three feet tall and shaped like a starving child with a possible deformity. It had no discernible features or shape, and it is essentially just a flat black space in the place where its substance and form should be. It's almost as if it was cut out of reality, or like the physical space that it occupies exists 
and just total voided out negative space. I don't know how else to describe it. That's the best I've got. Something very different that freaked me out about this encounter happened in that instant we first noticed each other. When the thing turned its head area toward me and leaned back off the tree a bit, I saw its arms were extending, maybe 20 or 30 feet straight up in the trunk of the tree and into some of the leafier branches at the top. This completely froze me in my tracks for a second, even after swearing that I would be ready for it the next time it showed up. Its arms were thin and filled with the same empty blackness as before, but they just didn't seem to be natural. Its arms were almost fluid-like in their motion, or slithering like snakes, sort of. It's so tough to explain because the whole thing never does seem to belong in its way at all to its surroundings. But again, the way it moves its body really just doesn't line up with the way it's shaped. I'm still not sure if it's the actual motions of the thing, or if it is a lack of any three-dimensional form, but looking at this thing is so disorienting. It's hard to tell what it's doing when it moves, how big it really is, or even how far away it is. I can only be for sure of its location this time, because I know where the tree is that it was standing against. This all happened in about three seconds, and just like every other time, I have a brief second or two where my brain is just unable to process what I'm seeing in front of me, even though I've seen it before several times now. I'm not actually sure if it ran for me first as I turned and ran away from it at top speed that time, though it was definitely startled to see me. We were much closer to one another the first time than any other time, so maybe it went fight instead of flight in that instance. I don't know. That's assuming it even thinks and reacts like a rational living creature. It was just so much more creepy this time around with those crazy arms, like a demented evil little inflatable tube man, which I'm sure sounds funny until you actually see it yourself. I hadn't gotten a look at this thing clearly since the first time, and it's been so long since then that the memory of that first encounter has slowly been fading away. It was roughly the same as before in shape and size, but no eyes at all this time that I could see. And yet again, I am struck by how infinitely dark this thing is. I know this is something that I keep repeating, but I still don't think I have accurately depicted just how empty the area it fills is. Every time that I have seen this thing, it has been as if I spotted it doing something that it shouldn't have been. Now I don't believe it was surprised as it seemed to be when it seen me. If it weren't for the jarring and bizarre sight of its long, clumsy arms, I might have reacted quicker. But I did all right at the time, I guess. Possibly because when I saw it standing there, so plainly out in the open, a weird sense of validation for my crazed post and all the ensuing drama came over me. At that moment, right then, I was totally sure I was going to get a picture of it, or that when I yelled to my girlfriend, she would then turn and see it standing there as well. I didn't react the way I did previous times, for sure, because I dropped my tool bags on the ground and went running into the backyard at a full sprint while yelling my girlfriend's name. I guess it didn't seem excited enough when I called out to her, because my girlfriend just held up the wait a minute finger while slowly and casually standing up off the swing bench to try and see what I was running towards. I reached for my phone but immediately realized that it was in the backpack that I had just dropped, which caused me to briefly freeze and almost go back for it. But then I kind of just double clutched the decision instead and took off running after it. I honestly thought I had better get a chance of getting to it than getting back to my bag, digging out my phone and then running over to get a picture. I legit thought I was going to catch it, but I never got anywhere close in the end. Stupid, I know. Get your camera out, you idiot. Also, in case you're wondering, I have no clue what I would have done if I had gotten close enough to grab it. Well, I must have lost sight of it for a split second during that brief pause, because I can't remember how it got into the next position I saw it in. But it had somehow now gone from having its head turned toward me and standing on two legs to being down on all fours, bounding away from the tree and back into the brush. 
It happened so fast it was like it didn't turn or move to be facing the other direction. It just all of a sudden was facing the other direction, in a different shape, moving a totally different way. I was about 15 feet away from it as it ran off and just kind of disappeared behind me in some bushes, just like when I saw it across the field in front of my friend's house. Also, I'm not sure if I mentioned this, but from this encounter and the previous one, I got the impression that it was more comfortable on all fours. I didn't and could not hear any sound at all coming from the creature via vocalization or interaction with the environment. This also includes telepathically. Possibly, I didn't hear anything this time because of the tapping sound in my ears. Or perhaps it's because there was a lot of action in my neighborhood and it gets a little noisy. I did not follow the thing into the woods because simultaneously, when I lost sight of it, I also got distracted by the sight of something up in the tree out of the corner of my eye. When I got to the tree, I looked up just in time to see both of the thing's arms sliding and slithering back up the tree, moving like a tape measure made of black spaghetti being retracted back into its holster. It looked like it had either detached its arms and ran off without them, or even maybe that there was another one up in the tree that had been reaching down to it, which is precisely what I thought was going on at the time. For a brief moment, I idiotically felt that I had cornered another one of them, and it was up in the tree, that I also might catch it somehow. Regardless, at this point, I was now standing at the base of the tree, looking way up the trunk where I saw its hands, which I haven't seen at any other time, with slender finger-like things tapping on a high branch, making a typing motion as if it had a keyboard up there, sitting on the tree limb. It was then that I realized what the sound in my ears was. It was the very distinct sound of typing on a keyboard, although the noise in my ear was not any louder now that I was closer to the tree than it was when I was across the backyard. The noise wasn't loud in general, but it sounded like it was right in my ear, and it sounded familiar, like the keyboard on my computer inside my home. Obviously, this last statement may be overthinking, but at the moment, I felt like it was a memory of the sound of me typing being relayed in my ear, rather than a noise coming from an outside source, if that makes any sense. It happened so fast again, and after just a second or two, its arms slid up behind the bottom of the branch as its hands simultaneously stopped the typing and pulled down behind the top of the same tree branch where they both disappeared completely. The lack of shadow and depth put against something that does reflect light is a difficult thing to explain until you actually see it. It makes it near impossible to tell distances or even what direction anything is moving so it almost looks like it's always coming towards you or going away from you. As soon as the arms and hands were gone entirely, I briefly checked behind me to make sure it wasn't still there and gave a quick look around the trees for the thing making sure to keep aware of the treetop area. But I never saw anything again. I then turned back around and walked around the tree a couple of times, but I saw nothing up in the sparse covering that the tree provided. I checked all around and even threw some rocks up there to see if I could get something to move around, but obviously nothing. The sound in my ear stopped as quickly as it started, and I knew then that the thing was gone. By this point, my girlfriend had hung up the phone and was standing in the doorway to the porch shouting to me, asking what is going on, and now down in the backyard wondering how the hell I'm going to explain this. When I asked my girlfriend if she saw that, she responded with these two deflating words, saw what? And it just made my heart sink so low because I knew it had just happened again. It was right there and apparently caught in an awkward position, which seemingly it had nowhere to go. My girlfriend was right there for validation as well, I thought, and yet again, I got nothing. I explained it away as saying that I thought I saw a black bear, but it must have been a raccoon, and my girlfriend shrugged it off quickly enough only after giving me shit for throwing rocks at what I foolishly told her was a raccoon. Not only is this thing incredibly frustrating 
with how it continually is able to avoid giving me proof. But the whole scenario just made me feel like an idiot. I feel like it tricked me for some reason, but I don't know why, which in itself is also eating me up inside. I've gotten over trying to piece together the specifics of the event, as well as they are all similar in some way, but different in others. The arms, flashing eyes, turning into a dog thing, the sound it made, I mean, what the hell is this thing? My girlfriend and I were driving from Bremerton, Washington to Shelton, Washington for a New Year's party at my friend's house. Now, I'm not sure if anyone is familiar with this highway, but it's a curvy road with only one lane on either side. It was around 11 o'clock at night, so it was pretty dark out. When we were almost to Shelton, we came around a curve to find something standing directly in the middle of our side of the road. Luckily, there weren't any other cars in the other lane because I would have either hit them or whatever was standing in the road because I had to swerve all the way into the other lane to avoid it. After we barely missed this thing, neither me or my girlfriend could figure out what the fuck was standing in the road. This thing looked gnarly, almost like it was snarling. It kind of resembled a bear, but it was also way too tall to be a bear. I guess you could say it had the legs of a deer, and the upper body was a bear. I don't know if skinwalkers are in this area, but whatever it was, it did not look familiar or friendly. I've seen plenty of deer and bear to know that it wasn't either of those things. My girlfriend and I both just refer to it as the demon bear that almost didn't let us make it into 2020. Can anybody help me figure out what the hell we saw? Back years ago, when I was an adventure hound, I was hiking the various forests of the Southwest and Pacific Northwest. This sighting happened to me in Oregon, in the Mount Hood National Forest, back in 2009. I hope this isn't too alarming, because I know many friends of mine who are going to listen to this and freak because they live in Oregon, and frequently explore the same national forest. Oregon is a beautiful state, full of lush timberwoods and greenery everywhere, and varying degrees of temperate and moderate temperatures. If you haven't gotten the chance to visit the state, give it a chance. It's got a little bit of everything, from desert to thick forests. Besides the sighting, I've had nothing but great experiences in this state, with much wonderful people. The sighting itself was back in May of 2009, to be exact. I was hiking alone by myself on Mount Hood National Forest. Beautiful forest full of thick pine and timber for miles on end. It's incredibly peaceful. During this time, I had hiked off trail for quite a few miles to do my own exploring. I can remember it very clearly. I was sitting down on a fallen tree, finishing up a ham sandwich to put some fuel back in my body. As I was getting up and getting out my canteen to drink, out of the clearing in front of me, down a small incline, a large buck burst out the trees and was in full sprint mode. Before I can even finish the thought in my head, wow, that buck is huge. The largest black wolf I could have ever imagined broke through the trees right where the buck had just emerged in full chase. This was the biggest wolf I'd ever seen, and it was very, very large. In fact, so much so that it was very unnatural. It looked to be the size of a miniature horse or something of that nature. Its face, even though I was easily 200 yards away, looked strange. I can't quite explain it, but it looked different. Not the same structured face a wolf would have. Its snout and overall facial bone structure were just different. It probably took a whole three seconds for this thing to pass by the entire clearing in front of me and chase of the buck into the trees. More than enough time to get plenty of detail. There weren't any trees blocking the sunlight from this clearing either. It was a beautiful sunny day in May, so I got full details on what this thing looked like. By far the creepiest and strangest thing I've ever seen in the woods, period. I was just outside, it's 11.30, and I was having a cigarette. It's a small town, no traffic, no noise. 
But then I sense something, and out of the corner of my eye, see something walking down the street on all fours. So I look up, and it's gone. At first, I brushed it off, and then I got that feeling, the what if, especially with always being in this sub. So I get the chills and immediately put my cigarette out. I rush inside and close the door and go to the kitchen. So I look out the window and I don't know if anyone will believe me, but there was a whole pale outline of something across the street behind the trash can watching me. And it's a trash can on a desolate street. No clutter, nothing. And we locked eyes and I immediately started getting the chills again. So I started walking away through the hallway and I took a peek out the hallway window and the thing was next to my truck. I ran to my room, took three shots of whiskey, and now don't want to leave the room for the rest of my life. It wasn't a dog or a raccoon, or a possum. This thing looked like a heroin addict or a chupacabra. To be clear, I honestly don't know if it was a crawler, but this is the best place, so please, bear with me. Every summer, me and my friends used to go to this camp in southern Illinois on an isolated huge plot of land with beautiful locations. If you live near this area, well, you've probably heard of it because it's pretty popular and is honestly a good camp with great people, but isn't cheap and has a long history though. But due to privacy, I won't say the name of it. This is actual history, which is what makes it feel off. Throughout this camp, there are different units too, host different genders and ages. One of these units, one night more than a couple years back, all four to five cabins burned down mysteriously, but luckily, no one were in them at the time. There were no signs of arson or any sort of aggressive behavior, no records of lightning, thunder, or any other weather-related things. They were confused, but brushed it off, but... Clearly, some people were weirded out. One thing I won't forget to mention is that this area has definitely been known to be a location of past Native American locations. I'll put it short, but a group of pastors from Europe came to America over a period of time and, sadly, most were killed except for two. Some were painful, and others were quick but cruel, such as a tomahawk to the head and lit on fire. These were actual people, and I'll post about them later. There is more, such as genuine adults being afraid because of sightings of something, but just brushing it off as another camper or adult. Let's get on to what made me hold a little fear. There's something off about it, but it is a fun place. And one summer night before sixth grade, most were sleeping, and I was, until I heard something which is strange because I was born with a hearing disorder, so I have to wear hearing aids and can hear good with them, but without, I can't hear well. I put them in and listened. It sounded like footsteps, but everyone understands that feeling that something isn't right, and my idiot little self called out hello despite the feeling of dread. It stopped, then unsteadily started coming towards my direction. All the cabins are on stilts and are connected by a big catwalk. There are about six of them in this unit. I got worried and then hid under my sleeping bag on the bottom bed. Bunk beds were in these cabins, about five in each, and the front was opened up and had no door. It sounds like normal adult footsteps, but were off and in a slow, desperate rate. It stopped right outside the cabin, and it was quiet for a while. I looked up for a second, and I only saw an outline on something visibly taller than any adult, maybe seven footish. Then I burrowed my head in the pillow, and after a few long minutes, it slowly walked away off the catwalk, walked to the gravel road that connects the camp together, and this is where I honestly held fear. For the next half hour, it just drug its foot or feet in the gravel road constantly and would stop, just to do it again and it would start getting close and then would drag away. It was horrible. Then it groaned, which was terrifying, because it confirmed that it was something smarter, or at least not a normal animal. It sounded similar to a human, 
but rough, and I could feel it in the air. It was so weird. The worst part was the scream or howl that came from the distance towards the uninhabited part of the camp. I can't really explain it, but it definitely didn't sound like a human. That thing was dragging in the road. It suddenly stopped, and then I could hear it bolt off, off in the other direction. I was young, and it was so off-putting, but this probably wasn't as dangerous and scary as other stories. But some of the takeaways are that this took place in the southern Illinois area, near the Kentucky border, and took place in an area with a history of unsettling events. I live in southern Utah. There's a lot of natives who live in my town, and many stories or beliefs of these creatures. Around an old mining location, there is stories of skinwalkers. One encounter my friend was coming back from a party. They started up the car and saw a coyote coming for them. They locked the doors and began driving away. In the rearview mirror, they said they saw something running towards the car on two legs. It didn't seem like a human and was keeping up with the car pretty well, even at 55 miles an hour. Most kids who have attended bonfires out there have very similar stories. Just wanted to ask if anyone has heard of skinwalkers chasing their cars. In some cases, the cars couldn't even start at all. Most natives won't go towards this old mining location or other places in my town. I work closely with a childhood buddy and he confides in me greatly, so I know he's not bullshitting me when he tells me about this kind of stuff. He lives in a much more rural area than I do and has many more longer stretches of roads to drive, especially during the evening time because the back roads end up being much faster than getting stuck in rush hour traffic. In November, he had seen this big, tall, hairy wolf looking thing come out of these huge bushes at the intersection of this road one evening. Didn't get a great look at it because it was primarily engulfed in shadows but enough that he was still able to make out size and somewhat of a shape. Scared the shit out of him. Didn't see it again until around three weeks later, just after Thanksgiving. Told me he saw the same creature stepping into the tree line from a slope by the road. Said there was blood and tufts of hair where this thing had just been. He assumes it had eaten a deer or some other small animal, and that was where the blood and the fur were. Then... He saw the animal a third time in January, much closer to where his house is. Said he got out of his car and felt this terrible feeling deep in his gut, like something was horribly wrong. He instinctively looked out about 60 yards to his left, and behind a large oak tree was what he describes as a real-life werewolf, standing there in the flesh. It was much brighter out at this time of the day when it happened, so he could see a lot more details. He relayed to me that this was the exact same creature he had seen the months previous, but it said it was even more ugly and evil looking than what he had thought. Told me this thing had glowing yellow eyes. Not bright, but just a subtle glow that seemed alien-like. Said it had a shorter snout, but could see this thing had huge sharp teeth and massive claws. This thing had a smirk on its face, but it was like a I'm about to hurt you and enjoy it kind of smirk. He fled for his house and locked every door and window. Now, just a couple of weeks ago, he believes this thing has been trying to get into his house. Because of the street light placement, light can still shine through his closed blinds. Meaning, if you were to stand in front of his closed window at night, you would be able to see your silhouette in full view from inside the house perfectly. Well, a few times now, he's felt that same ominous feeling locked his house down and closed his windows and blinds. He said he's seen this thing walking around the outside of his house. He'll see its massive shape as it walks by and wiggles the door handle to see if they're unlocked. It will stand directly in front of the window and drag its claws down the glass. It's like it's trying to just terrorize him. He hasn't mentioned anything about it making a sound and I haven't asked. He's not exactly sure what to do. It's become frequent lately only showing up in the early morning and doing this to him. He feels like he's been marked ever since that first sighting, like this thing recognized the fact that he saw it, and now it's been occurring more and more.
That's the only way he relays it to me. Oh, and I should let you know that all of our businesses are still open. Even in the current quarantine, so that's how we've still been in physical communication. Now personally, I don't believe he is seeing a werewolf, but I believe he is genuine in his emotion and fear. I know so very little when it comes to dogmen, so I can't say for sure that's what he's seeing either. But he puts a hard emphasis on the fact that it looks like a Hollywood werewolf. Only massive. I have never heard the term crawler, and since this all began, we haven't known what to refer to this as or who to contact. I'm still at a loss for words to explain just how scary this is. Most all because it is no doubt something not human or any known animal. This is taking place nightly, behind a close friend's home, not far away, and started last fall. The area is north in Florida, in a very rural area. Behind her house is wild bamboo that has completely overgrown the land surrounding the ruins of an old house that literally collapsed or imploded somewhere approximately 15 years ago. These things have not only taken over back there, but have been seen by several of us, but never in the daylight. This started with a mound appearing that wasn't there prior to last fall, that was fairly large size and built entirely of heavy debris from that house, and broken bamboo as well, which alone is scary, considering no person can break through that in such a way due to the strength. Since it first appeared, this mound has constantly expanded in width and height to an alarming size and has several cave-like openings in it. Now, they have dug pretty large-sized tunnels going underneath it. Now, I'm concerned as one of them have been seen coming out of the bamboo and underneath her house. Under the addition in the back where her dogs at night will not go alone and act purely terrified even though still inside the house. We now know that's because these dogs have known this thing or more than one has been under her kitchen floor nightly for who knows how long. The land around the old house alone has a very strong and bothersome vibe to it alone. Now this. What we have seen is a very thin and pale figure which doesn't appear to have normal legs and very elusive and hostile feeling. Aside from very sinister looking yellow glowing eyes, I haven't seen nor has anyone else got any other facial features. What do we do? I want to get documentation of this, which I do have pictures of this structure they built over time, but none of them, as none of them will dare attempt to even go out her back door at night, as the edge of the bamboo and ruins are very close by. First, I feel as though I have to give you readers some background information about myself. I was raised by my mother, who was 50% Cherokee and 50% French. Us kids have never met our biological grandpa, and believes in paranormal things but tries to pretend that it's not there. And by my father, who is Scottish and English and German and Jewish by blood. He, on the other hand, is 100% atheist and is rather skeptical about things he cannot explain. He endeavors to be a logical and scientific person in all things. Well, due to major differences in personalities, beliefs, and values, they divorced when I was eight. She soon married my stepfather, who is a devout Southern Baptist from Mississippi, and basically gave up her identity as a native and became a God-fearing woman. Despite issues with my mother, my dad continued to let us visit with her mom and stepdad because he felt they were good people. They taught us many things about native culture, spirituality, legends, and the people. My grandmother and I spent a lot of time together, so I was given an opportunity to learn her medicine. My grandma comes from a long line of medicine men and women, and one is herself. Now, so many years later, at the ripe old age of 23, I am one myself. So now you have some insight, and I'll continue. This isn't a ghost story, but I do believe it qualifies as paranormal, as it is outside usual daily happenings. About two years ago, my father, brother, and I moved into a new home, a little more in the country than our previous homes had been, something we all thoroughly enjoyed because 
we grew up immersed in nature and a love for the land. Shortly after moving there, about three months in, I decided it was time to expand my family by getting myself a puppy. This would be the first dog that would actually be in my care. I've always had a very strong connection to dogs as my guiding spirit is a wolf. I learned this after a vision quest many years ago, but that's a story for another time. After a while of searching, I came across a beautiful five-month-old male German Shepherd pit bull mix. I went to meet him and instantly fell in love. He was the greatest, very sweet, kind of the cats and protective of me. He became my best friend, everything you could want in a dog. Now, anyone who has owned a puppy or young dog will know, potty training is a task. Even after being with us two months, he was still waking me up every two to four hours to go outside. Hard on the heart rhythm, but had to be done. On this occasion, in particular, we got a late night visitor that we weren't expecting. Like I said, my dog woke me up in the night. This time it was around 2.45 in the morning, and I wasn't ready, but I dragged myself out of bed and clicked on the leash. Opening the back door greeted me with a cool breeze. I rolled my eyes and went out into the yard with my pooch. He did the usual dog thing, sniffed around and jumped in the freshly cut grass, completely forgetting what we come outside to do in the first place. I whistled at him, recaptured his attention, and he got back to business. As he squatted, I turned my head to the sky offering him some privacy. The moon was exceptionally large that night. Almost full, but not quite bright. During this observation, I began to realize there was no typical nighttime noise around me. As if that wasn't unusual enough, I had a shiver go down my spine, and my arm hair began to stand on end. That's when I heard my dog let out a low growl as he pinned himself against my legs. When I looked down as him and his tail was tucked and hackles were raised, when I tried to move and he pressed himself against me more, another shiver came over me, and now I took the opportunity to follow where his eyes were looking. When I did, I was looking at what appeared to be a coyote, not totally uncommon in the area. We'd heard them on many nights living here. But this was different, looked different, and felt different. The most frightening thing, however, was that it was looking right back at me. I didn't move, didn't take my eyes off it. That's how I was able to see its features so clearly in the moonlight. Its fur looked thin, even bald in some spots. Its eyes were yellow, not reflective yellow like you'd see on a dog in the dark, but yellow like the sun, very powerful and almost blinding. Then, looking more closely, I noticed its back legs were longer than a normal coyote, longer than any canine creature should be, actually. Starting at the hips and going down, they seemed to look almost bipedal in design. That's when it dawned on me just what I was saying. I picked up my 60-pound dog, never taking my eyes off this creature. As I did, I said a Cherokee prayer in my head that I'd learned from my grandmother. As if it was physically upset, it backed up slightly, and then I heard a voice that perfectly mimicked my grandmother say, Why would you do that, Mikers? No one aside from my grandparents ever called me that. It was their special name for me. With that, I darted for the door. Dog still in my arms, entered, put him down, and locked it behind me. The noise must have woken my brother because he came into the kitchen, all bothered, asked me what was going on and why the dog was all riled up. I held my finger to my mouth and shut off the light. We then made our way into the living room and shut that light off as well. And like something out of a horror movie, the outline of a tall humanoid thing shone through the stained glass of the small window on the door, thanks to the bright moonlight. We both froze, and he made a grab for the knob when it started to turn. Capturing it just in time to lock it, that's when it spoke to him, but this time in my grandfather's voice. Bubba, why don't you let Grandpa in? His face turned ghost white, and he turned to me. That's when I mouthed the word, and he paled even more. It began to tap on the glass, and we both went into my room and ignored the knocking. The next night, around the same time, the tapping only grew louder. 
We sat in the living room praying to a Cherokee sun goddess that it would go away. The tapping turned into knocks, which turned into pounding the more we prayed. This must have woken my father because he came downstairs in a huff. We told him about the night prior during the day, but he didn't believe us and thought it was just one of my brother's friends being an asshole. So, when he saw the silhouette in the window, he grew more angry and made a beeline for the door. We yelled at him to not open it, but he did. However, instead of harming him, it seemed to be afraid because it got down on four legs again and disappeared down the road. My dad's face paled as he stumbled back a few steps. He locked the door behind him, and we all went to bed. The next day, we talked about the situation. I explained to him the natives call this creature a skinwalker. They aren't very common in my native legend. They're more of a western native legend, but my grandparents still taught us about them. Dad being the skeptic just summed it up to a weird thing he couldn't explain. Later that day, I went to our local craft store and bought juniper ash as my grandma instructed and sprinkled it around our house. It never returned, but my dog was never the same after that night. It's as though the entire experience changed him. He went from a loving animal to mean and unpredictable. He started lashing out at anyone who wasn't female. We tried correcting it over the course of a year and a half, but nothing helped. He finally harmed my brother, causing him to bleed, and I was forced to find him a new home. Luckily, he is with a couple, who are both female, and he seems much happier. But even to this day, I guarantee he won't go out at night. I didn't mention the name of the creature very many times because... It's considered a bad omen in native culture to give those things any energy. If anyone is nervous after reading this, please feel free to message me and I will happily walk through you through a prayer. My father, very recently in the past months, had traveled back out to a spot only he knew about to hunt again during the season. During his hunting trips, he ran across his three old game cams that he set up years and years ago that he must have forgotten about. He stuck big old SD cards in there, and each card was full of footage and pictures. After going through his pictures, he had tons of pictures of deer, mountain lions, all sorts of animals, but the one thing that disturbed him was these three pictures he had on this tall, wolf-looking creature. After seeing the pictures myself, I will say it's pretty freaky looking. You can only see the top half of it in all three, but because of the thick brush, the rest is kind of blocked out. These pictures dated back in July, a few years back, which would make sense why the foliage was so thick in the picture. It looked to be like the picture, which made sense. The animal, or whatever it was, had to have been at least seven or eight feet tall in comparison to where my father put the cam on the tree. It had teeth that looked to be far too big for its own mouth. Very hyena looking, actually. Like if you had crossbred the two, but very thick and matted fur from what we could make out. Anyway, just thought you might find it interesting. There was nothing really of interest on the other two cams he retrieved, just on the one. I'm currently in search for the SD card with the pictures on it. My dad still has it and never deleted any of it, so I can try and get them for you. We'll be in touch. Thanks. My girlfriend and I decided one day last summer to go hiking at the closest trailhead near where she lived. At the time, this was up in northern Michigan. Both of us at the time knew nothing of the so-called dogmen and weren't into such hoaxes or stories of animals like that. Now, her and I aren't so sure and have both become much more receptive to these types of experiences that people claim to have had. My woman and I went up to the trailhead near where she lived. This would have been the Manistee River trailhead. It's like a mile loop or something. Actually, I think it's 10 miles. And we were going to try and do at least a couple miles and turn around again. This is in the afternoon. I don't know if the time of day is anywhere relevant, but it should help make the story a little more concise and clear. During this time, we were probably around a mile, maybe two into the entire trail. It was beautiful, since it was summertime outside. 
The surrounding forests and nature were just breathtaking, and it felt amazing to be out in the woods. As we started hiking further in, we both commented on how it was weird that we hadn't seen anyone else on the trail that day. We were literally the only ones. This trailhead is usually pretty well traversed in all seasons to my knowledge. It was a beautiful day out too, with near perfect weather. I don't know if we had been walking for maybe an hour or so, but I remember my girlfriend was the first to comment that the sounds of the birds and animals around us had gone completely silent. I'm talking pen dropping quiet. It felt a little eerie, but we brushed it off and thought nothing of it as we went on our merry way. Not too long after that, maybe 15 minutes at most is when we started to notice this feeling of dread. I didn't say anything, but my girlfriend started to say she didn't feel good, like something wasn't right. I had the same feeling in my gut. It felt like we shouldn't be there, like we were out of place, like something bad was about to happen. I slowed my pace and began looking around, searching all of my surroundings. Nothing. Nothing even looked out of place, and I didn't see anyone ready to jump out with an axe and get us. We continued on hiking, the feeling only intensifying. We kept a good view on our surroundings, and we never did see anything at this point. It's no wonder we kept on pursuing. It might sound incredibly dumb to have kept pushing forward, but we just thought our intuitions were off. Maybe another 10 minutes later, and we see this older gentleman coming towards us from the opposite direction. His pace is incredibly quick, and he looked very distressed. About 20 feet away from us, he signaled to us and asked us if we planned on continuing the trail loop. My woman and I shared confused glances as he quickly explained that there's a dogman further up on the trail stalking him, and he's leaving, and we should too. Before we could even respond, he's walking back the way we came, yelling to us nonsense that he didn't think they were up this part of the trail and this part of the state, and we need to leave. We were just kind of confused and shocked at his reaction, thinking he was somewhat crazy. But was he? We had never heard of a dogman, had no idea at the time that this was something that to be afraid of, but we both had this ominous feeling in the pits of our stomach. That we could not deny. Something was going on. Maybe somebody was pulling a prank on us. We weren't sure. This is all weird at the time. I remember asking her, What's a dog man? Since I was in a Michigan state native. What did he mean by this part of the state? We had stopped to question what we wanted to do. I decided right then and there that we were fine and we should push a little further before turning around for the day. I think we had made it a good three miles, might be more. It seemed at the time that my girlfriend didn't really want to push forward but felt obligated because I wanted to. I tried my best to make her feel safe that we would be fine with nothing bad happening. This is the part where my mind was drastically changed. We get to this part in the trail and we start hearing this low rumbling noise. I stop in my tracks to try and listen to the sound that is now very audible with the silent forest around us. Within a second, I am fully able to process the sound and realize it's actually a low growl coming from the trees to my right. Through the brush and off behind a tree, clear as day, was this German shepherd looking dog, only high up. Well, I should say at least the head was. Way past my head is staring down at me, growling and baring teeth. This head had to have been at least eight or nine feet off the ground. I'm six one, and I had to look up to look at this thing. It was this massive, massive dog head, the size of a lion's head easily but I couldn't see the body. There was too much brush obstructing any view I had. I could see the head and it was staring right at my girlfriend and I. We both take off sprinting back the way we came. This is where things got worse. I realized as we were running that not only were the woods still dead of any normal animals and sounds and there were no other people on the trail, but the worst of all was that there were sounds coming on both sides of the trail, off in the brush, we began hearing crashing, breaking of branches. It sounded like multiple large animals were paralleling us on the trail on both sides. This occurred almost the entire sprint 
all the way back to the trailhead entrance, where we fled for our lives. Running back to the car was honestly such a blur looking back. I don't even know how we were able to run so much as we did. At some point down the trail, I stopped hearing all the crashing and brush breaking behind and beside. I was so pumped full of adrenaline, I don't think I fully registered that something or multiples of something were following us. Whatever they were had to have been huge because they were making so much noise crashing through the trees and wilderness around us. We get back to the car and we get the hell out of there, questioning each other and asking what happened. What was that all about? It seemed like all we had was fear and a never-ending list of questions. We asked each other about the older man that had said something about a dogman, but we didn't know anything about that at the time. Instead of being fearful, we tried to be as studious as possible, researching as much as we could and anything we could find of anything supposedly living in the wilderness of the state of Michigan. Things kept pointing back to something called a cryptid. It was in reference to a dogman, the same thing as the man on the trail had mentioned. After reading more about how they're very commonly seen up in Michigan, Wisconsin, etc., and what they look like, I truly believe we did see one of these things on that day. The description is almost to a T what I saw. My girlfriend and I both now believe that there truly is something out there in the woods of Michigan. We're a lot more safe now when we go out, terrified of what we know is really existing, but still cautious, always checking around us and our surroundings. We haven't had to talk to anyone about this, including friends and family. For whatever reason, I guess, with all the supposed encounters, I'm surprised there isn't more talk around here about them. We honestly never knew they existed before this happened. I don't know what I saw, but I want to share this story that keeps me wondering if I really saw what I saw. I know I saw it, but could be my mind playing tricks on me. So here's my story. I got a new puppy a few weeks ago, and during this time, the motion sensor light broke on the side of our house. At around 10 p.m., I was taking him out to pee, and it was super dark and silent. I was kind of freaked out by the silence, but could hear trees cracking in the wind and weird sounds coming from a tiny forest area behind our house. I felt super paranoid, so I grabbed my pup and went inside. Two or three hours later, I had to take the pup out for his last pee of the night. I picked him, went outside and replaced him on the ground right outside the door. When I did that, I looked to the left and saw a smallish black figure run like a dog and then grow as if it were running like a human and went behind our above ground pool. Scared as hell, I picked my pup up immediately and ran inside locked the door and just stared at the door, waiting for something to come running up to the door. We have a five foot fence, but because my pup was only like 10 weeks old and could squeeze through the fence posts, so we had to zip tie construction barrier all around the fencing so nothing could get through. I thought that whatever it was that I saw, I wouldn't be able to escape. So I woke my dad up, grabbed a gun, and with his confidence, we checked the yard out and found nothing. Not telling my mom. The next morning, my mom takes the pup out at around 5.30 in the morning. I'm sleeping on the couch, and all I hear is my mom yell and run inside with the puppy because she saw a black figure run behind her pool. I still had my gun near me, so I grabbed it and went to see what was outside. I looked outside everywhere to make sure there wasn't an animal stuck on the inside of her fence, but found nothing. I told my mom about what I saw the night before and was just kind of in agreement that it was weird, but that was the end of that. So that's the end of the story and now I'm kind of scared to be alone in the dark at my house at night. It could be my mind playing tricks on me, but I swear I saw what I did. So I live in Wyoming, Michigan about a walking distance away from Resurrection Cemetery. If you look it up on Google Maps, you will see it has a tree line surrounding it. The tree line closest to the woods is where I've seen it almost all times. I have multiple stories, but, but I'll try to share only the most haunting ones. 
The first encounter I had was with my sister. She was going to take a walk to the cemetery. It was late at night, and I had the gut instinct to go with her, so I did. We decided to play Pokemon Go, because why not? I didn't like the forested area around it, especially this big pine tree visible via a maintenance path that led to the crematorium. I was scared out of my mind, but we went towards the crematorium, away, to get a Pokestop and a Jigglypuff. We had to go so close that we were on the maintenance path, but the nicer cobblestone half. It was when I looked to my right that I first saw it, hunched over. It looked like a normal human being, but more terrifying. It appeared to have seen me too, because it stood up as well. I could tell it was tall. I'd estimate about seven feet in height. I told my sister to run, and we ran home where I proceeded to pray in my room for a while. My mom had a sighting as well. She had mentioned seeing something gray hunched in the top of the pine tree I mentioned earlier, watching us. When she looked back, it was gone. Safe to say, we went home earlier that day. I consider myself slightly psychic, and when I closed my eyes, sometime around the time that she saw it, I saw two big gaping holes staring back at me. My mom described the creature, and I recognized it as something I'd drawn a few weeks before, I burned this image, but I have since redrawn it. My most recent sighting, and the one that kept me from going back to the cemetery, happened in broad daylight with a friend. I'll keep his name hidden for privacy, but we decided to go to said cemetery after class. College program, but for high school freshmen. We wandered around the cemetery for hours, until my arm started hurting, and I decided that we should go home for a snack. As we walked, my anxiety heightened. I had told them about the crawler, but I suspected we wouldn't have to worry as it was daytime. As we were walking along the sidewalk, about to reach the tree line, I saw a dead squirrel dog arm in the middle of the sidewalk. I looked up and I saw the crawler run straight into the tree line. It was gray and ran on all fours rather than just two legs. I told my friend to run, and he did. We both ran until we reached the intersection. I'm not a believer in anything that we can't see with our own eyes. I usually need substantial amounts of evidence if anyone is to make substantial claims, rightfully so. This event that I'm going to relay to you, however, was a little unorthodox, so to speak. I've never been so creeped out by what I was told and what I saw. I kept it to myself to keep from inciting panic, but I have no idea what I believe it was. I do believe that it wasn't normal, and it was something different. Different meaning I'm not sure exactly. Let me preface with every September, my family has this big get-together at my uncle's property, which extends very far out in the middle of nowhere, basically. This is great because this big get-together is a huge end-of-the-summer barbecue. Lots of us drink, many eat tons and tons of food, and just good times to be had. Well, in this instance, everyone showed up to the barbecue early in the morning, and we had this massive cookout. Time to prep food, all that good stuff. Everything went great. Evening time, the kids are all around the property playing and having a great time. Everybody is eating food and having a good time. Some of the older boys are off in the woods in the far back side of my uncle's place. I was tasked with keeping tabs on them, making sure they weren't getting into trouble. My uncle has some old bear traps back there that are still very much active, poison, and some other semi-harmful things. But the boys are pretty smart and know the general area of where to stay and to not venture beyond. My uncle's woods are part of state game land, so you can get lost in them if you travel for miles on miles on end. He loves it for hunting season. Gets a lot of deer, a lot of buck, gets a lot of turkeys as well in the spring. Anyway, so I'm sitting there chit-chatting with family for a little bit, halfway into my first paps, and the oldest of the boys, well, we'll call him Chuck for the story, pulls me to the side, and he's pale as white sheets. He looked nervous, petrified even, Something was bugging him. I grew immediate concern on his demeanor alone. He said he and his brothers and cousins left the woods and won't go back in. 
there is this really big shape that kept following them in the woods close by. His younger brother thought it might have been some really big person in a werewolf costume. I couldn't even process what he told me at first, just because it was so outlandish. I kind of laughed it off nervously. They must have been seeing things. I told him to just stay out of the woods for now, and to leave it be. He didn't say much. Now, Chuck is the oldest of the boys. I tasked him with watching out for his younger brothers when they went and played in the woods. Fast forward a little later, right before it got too dark. I had completely forgotten all about the supposed nonsense that had occurred earlier in the evening. The sun was still out but starting to get dusky, so we thought it would be great to have a big bonfire campfire where we sit around and drink and have fun. Well, stupid me offered to go haul a bunch of wood up from the far side of his back property up to where he wanted the fire. My uncle has about two to three cords worth of wood in this small woodshed he has on the way back side of the property, out close to where the boys were playing earlier, actually. Remember though, at this time, I had totally forgotten all about what Chuck relayed to me, and any of that really. I go grab the wheelbarrow, and I'm making my way down to the small woodshed to fill up the wheelbarrow. It's a good 600 yards away from where we were cooking out at. I make my way to the shed, set the wheelbarrow down and start to walk into the shed to retrieve some wood. As I do this, I'm hearing brush move around and dead bramble being stepped on. You know, that kind of crunch sound when you step on dead thorns? That's what I was hearing, like someone moving around in these trees just outside the shed. This made me curious because everybody at the barbecue was up by the house. My uncle gets quite a bit of deer and other small animals coming through here, so... I just thought it was that and ignored it. I'm grabbing split pieces of wood and just hucking them into the wheelbarrow. The hair on my arms and neck really starts to stand up, almost as if my body is reacting to something. I stop and listen for a second. The birds are silent. Everything around me is quiet. I can faintly hear laughter and chatter up by the house coming down this way, echoing. But the wind is all about I could really hear. This was strange. I was grabbing the last bundle of wood to throw in, and now the feeling is so strong I can't ignore it anymore, even though it's only been a couple of moments since I arrived at the shed. I was being watched. I knew it. I knew the feeling. I don't know by who or what, but I could just sense it. My mind goes into the worst possible thing. A mountain lion. I'm being stalked by a mountain lion right now, just beyond the brush. I carefully grab the wheelbarrow and while trying to be as quiet and fast as possible, start to move back in the general direction of the house. I'm not sure if it was my reaction or just me worried about this mountain lion was going to jump out and get me, but I turned around and took a quick scan of my surroundings. I didn't want to leave totally vulnerable with my back to the shed and the sounds I was hearing directly behind me. Just a few ways off in the trees was where I was hearing the rustling just moments ago. There was this large black shape. I couldn't tell what it was immediately, but I saw these pointed dog ears that were high up, at least eight feet if I had to guess. My brain, scrambling to decipher what exactly I was looking at, understands that this definitely is not a bear. These ears were very dog-like. The mass or shape was so big that it didn't really appear to be something standing on all fours, or anything like that, but rather crouching, I guess. It was way too big to be a mountain lion, and mountain lions don't crouch, not like this. My brain just couldn't register what it was, but every fiber of my being was screaming at me to haul ass back to the house now. I should clarify that I couldn't really see any vivid details of this thing because of the brush and trees, but I could see that there was a large shape watching me. Like I said, I also saw the tall ears. You know, I really don't have an explanation for it. Maybe it was some unknown animal. I guess you can take what I say with a grain of salt, but I don't know. The way my body reacted to the presence of this thing was odd. The way everything went quiet. It bugs me. It tells me something wasn't right. You always should trust your gut instinct. And my gut instinct had nothing good to say about what was watching me. I could feel it watching me. The whole thing just felt wrong. It felt off. 
I don't think it was any kind of animal I know, but no animal I know gives off feelings like that. The only reason anything would ever go so quiet like that is because there is an alpha predator nearby. But this thing was so big. Could it have been an alpha predator? It was easily the size of a bear, but wasn't a bear based on shape alone. That also doesn't quite explain the canine-like ears I saw. The only thing I could sum up all of this was that it wasn't normal. I don't know what it was, and I'm a firm believer in science, but this was just something I can't explain. Take it what you will. Alright, so before I start, I have previous experiences with shadow people and spirits. What I'm about to say is a bit different. I moved to my new house, which was built in 2009. There is no history with spiritual activity whatsoever. I have two younger siblings who claim to see a wolf in the house. My mother has also claimed to see me when I wasn't present in the house or the room said. At night, I hear my personal restroom go off, as in the shower head splashing everywhere and random water splashing. I also see random shadows running around and hear scratching on my bedroom door and living room couch. Today I played with a candle asking what entities live here, and the only one answer I got was a wolf. I did more research and it has led me to believe it is a skinwalker. When I lit the candle, I asked for signs that something was here and I heard growling. Anyway, if anyone can help me more with the information on skinwalkers or what possesses my home, please reach out to me. This happened in northern Idaho, around the Canadian border. When my dad and I would go hunting, it was fairly standard practice for us to sleep under the stars in the bed of his pickup truck. I was about 8 or 9 at the time, and we had an unsuccessful day of hunting that Friday, and were going to stay the night at the site and then start back up early Saturday morning. Well, I was cozily sleeping in my bag when, around 2.30 in the morning, my dad and I both shot awake. There was some creature on the other side of the hill we were parked next to that made this sound I still haven't been able to find anywhere online. Loud as hell, it sounded like the cross of a screaming koala and a woman screaming out of primal rage. It yelled for approximately 30 seconds before silencing for about a minute. Then it screamed again. My father was at this point quickly shoving me and a few times from the back of the truck into the cabin where he also entered and locked the door. We heard the yell one more time after we were safely locked inside the truck cabin, and I asked my dad, who, being an avid hunter and lived in northern Idaho his whole life, what was happening, and I remember him looking scared and simply saying he doesn't know. So yeah, I'm 22 now and have tried to find anything that makes that noise for years now, but have been unsuccessful. I think it's a skinwalker, so that's what I'm going with. Maybe you guys have had similar experiences. So, my brother was telling me about a skinwalker story that he encountered a while ago that went something like this. A gathering of people, or a caravan party. The narrator did not know everyone there. He notices that the number of people at the party begins to fluctuate and decrease throughout the night, and everyone else starts to notice too. Some of them go out to look for the missing people, and the narrator stays around the fire. Although the people left separately, they all return after some time all at once with the missing people. So the party begins to quiet down, and the people who were once talking are sitting and listening silently. The narrator becomes aware and decides to go to bed because it's a bit boring, and some others do too. Right as he is going to sleep, he looks out the caravan window to see that everybody left outside is sitting silently and motionless around the fire. He is woken up the next day by someone else apparently at the gathering, asking if he was okay. Apparently, everyone who left the camp was found unconscious in the fields in various locations, and their apparent replacements were nowhere to be found. This is how he told it to me. So, 
I've had strange experiences in Austin before, where I hear a strange, deep croaking sound, or my friends would feel something chasing them if they were in the woods. But I think it's finally starting to attack, and it's scaring the hell out of me. Every single way it moved and basically shapeshifted just screams Skinwalker to me. Basically, I went outside to smoke some weed as normal. I was on the second story of my house on the deck, which usually makes me feel pretty safe. But as I went on to the third bowl, I heard a light rustling of leaves that was like a raccoon that quickly morphed into an aggressive and erratic behavior. The rustling got louder, like it grew in size to that of a human. But even though it was humanoid, and even made a small groan that sounded like it was hungry, the way the sound of it moving could dart across my left to right ear, almost like it's moving faster than a cheetah, but almost more articulate and precise with its movements. I then started telling myself that I'm on the second floor, so it can't hurt me. But then what I feared would happen, happened. It quickly darted over to me, from what I'm guessing was like 30 yards in just a few seconds. It then quickly scurried up the pillars of my deck. I don't know if skinwalkers can climb, but then pounced onto the wood with a disturbingly loud thud. I accepted death at this moment, as I was helpless and realized that this thing is so much stronger than me. But for some reason, it jumped off almost hesitant to kill me. It scurried around and then hurtled my fence with no efforts or grunts. It then darted around my entire backyard within seconds. I'm honestly really scared, and I don't know what to do. I want to go out tonight and look for it so I can videotape it. If I die, then the video will be on my phone, and then there will finally be proof that this evil exists.